All right, we're still hanging out with the Z-Man here, and we're going to do some looking at some of the dang photographs he's taken over the years. And tell me about this one, uh, Nick. And that was Leonard Skinner. I took that picture in Herb Green's studio. Good old Herb. Two to in uh, December thirtieth, nineteen seventy-six, because they were playing a New Year's Eve show at the Oakland Coliseum, and then you know I had shot them for three years. The first I met them the night of their first gig they ever played. They were opening up for The Who at the Cow Palace. The first show they ever did? The first show they ever did. Open I mean, for the... as they opened for The Who at the Cow Palace, and the reason they did that was The Who's road manager at the time and tour manager was Peter Rudge, who was their manager. And my friend Jack Miller, who had just gotten back from... He, was, he managed bands in the Marin County and pay for it by dealing dope. He was a Christian dope dealer. <laughs> I'm shooting backstage with the, the Who, and Jack comes in and says, hey, you've got to hear these guys. He Because he'd gone in and met these guys, and I said, hey, I'm taking pictures of the Who. And he says, see, no, come with me. Uh, you've got to go on just for one song uh, and hear them. So I went out and stayed for three songs. They were better than the Allman Brothers. They blew um, my mind. Then I met them afterwards, after the show, and we became friends, and oh. any time they came here, oh. I'd shoot them. And then they played two shows at the Oakland Coliseum in July, July 2nd mm. and July 4th. Those were the last two times I shot them. Then the plane went down in September. I was supposed to be on doing oh. a week of shows, and at the last minute, they bumped me and about seven other people to save money. And it turned out, probably saved my life mm -hmm. artemis called after the crash from the hospital in mississippi uh, and told us about the whole thing because yeah these guys these were great did they do day on the green yeah yeah, that's yeah, what yeah, I thought. yeah 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 i've yeah. got pictures of bill you know yeah. bill and ronnie coming onto the stage together bill loved it speaking of which the day on the green is probably the biggest bill ever got right i mean that's as big as it got right yeah but he, I, mean, I mean he also did part of the uh stones he, True. In set in eighty one. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. Who is this? What am I looking at That's here? That's Fidel Castro. Holy cannoli! He used to have uh, a hard time sleeping, so he'd get up and go to the stadium in Havana because he loved baseball, and he'd pitch at three in the morning. That's Roberto Salas, who was his photographer, took that. That was in nineteen sixty five. Wow, that's incredible. I was like, "What were you doing in Cuba?" <laughs> Well, yeah. I, you know what? I've never been. I always wanted to go. <laughs> Me too. That's kind of one of my bucket lists. This is one roll of film. This is at Keysar, the snack benefit concert oh, yeah. in March of 75. Yeah. Keysar got... on, Stan on Stanion. Yeah. That woman up there? Marlon Brando's wife? No. no that's uh, Sarah. Sarah Dillon. Sarah oh. Lady of the Lowlands. Looks, Very few pictures She looks a little her. like Dillon there profile was. Yeah. There. Yeah. And, and then uh, Marlon Brando was Marlon that Brando thing. with Joan Baez. Yeah. Yeah, my buddy that took the photo of the book, the cover of the book, that Jerry photo was was at this gig. Oh, yeah. oh Fra there's uh, Francis Coppola with um, God, what's his name that used to run the Trident? Uh, oh, I can't think of his name, but you know who it is. Neil Young. <laughs> wow, well, look at how young Neil is. Jesus. Bob. What year was this? This is like. March 23rd, 1975. Oh, yeah, like 75. Rich Danko. Oh, Patricia like Pavanetti, who was Marlon Brando, or um, Francis Coppola's girl, Friday. John Brody and his wife, 49er quarterback. Oh, man. Was... <laughs> Neil, this is all one roll of film. So sports, and, sports and rock and roll really aren't that far from each other at oh, all. No. Right? No. Son Artman, Francis, and... Uh, Bill was over here, Marlon Brando. Oh. Brando is Bill's idol. It's Kristen. Yeah. We've been together for, it'll be 50 years in August. Fellow photographer, right? No. No? Painter. Painter. Painter, downhill skier. Beautiful shot. Rebel. She's, beautiful spell. Mm. Beautiful woman. Mm. Um, you've got Dylan, Brando. This is all. Wow. Are you still doing um, rock and roll photography now? I know you don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you know, miss it? I, do you miss it? I miss 
I missed the time because I, you know, I, when I was doing it, well, I was like in the band, but it's yeah. different now. Yeah, now you'd have to I get mean, the thing and the thing I mean, and the thing. Now and go, I mean, going, let, let's say you go with the Rolling Stones. Yeah. You go in four by fours, they're with their families. Yeah. It's, you're not, it's not like you've been up two nights, oh. you're doing coke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, the, it's not the lifestyle. It's compartmentalized. And Keith yeah. Richards even f gave up cigarettes. Can you believe that? I love him. Barry took this. That he, Barry Feinstein, a friend of mine, he, huh. he was Dylan's photographer all through England. This is in Liverpool with a bunch That's of kids. That's a brilliant job. What year is that? Is it now? That was 71? in... No, that was in 65. Wow. 65 or 66. Yeah, those were just all kids in Liverpool. Wow. When he was basically... Was he... I guess he was up and coming at that point. Like well, he was, he'd already made it big. I mean, he yeah. was big in New York and big in London. I mean, That's he was big cool. everywhere. I played piano with him in St. Louis. Oh, wow. Was there he was. Jim took this. This is Miles here in, in town. He used to always go into the gym and box. Tell me a Jim Marshall story now that we're staring at this. Do you have one off the cuff? Yeah, well, the day I met Jim, I was working for Bobby Kennedy, and I called in sick, and it was during the Santa Clara Folk Rock Festival in San Jose, and, you know, I had a camera with two rolls of film. I was going to have shoot one shot of each band and then save the other roll for the doors. And I, there was this guy with a, five cameras and a hat, and he was giving people <laughs> shit because you know, I'd, like, con my way down into, like, what the pit area was, and it was a real low stage. And then this guy who was turned out to be Jim Marshall, pulls a knife, puts his throat of this, this fraternity guy, and says, get the fuck out of here, motherfucker. And I'm standing behind him, and I, Jim's putting the knife away, and I said, hey, man, is that knife real? He goes, yeah, it's real. And so is this. And he pulls out a gun. <laughs> and I said, who brings a fucking gun and a knife to a, a rock concert? He said, I do, man. And I said, who are you? He said, I'm fucking Jim Marshall. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> we, we became good friends wow. at that moment on ever since. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's Beautiful. Wow. One of, of the great fights ever. Yeah. This is Jim's. Yeah. yeah, he took that at Monterey. Now, do you think he was really that close or is this zoomed in? No, no. He was, he was, no, right, he was there. right there. See, in those days, we were always right there. There's no zoom. You were just like, it'd be like, just like this. Well, those kind of cameras had zoom, but you were right. Oh, no. Like, right like all those, the picture, the, yeah. that proof sheet? Yeah. It'd be like from here to here. Yeah. Brilliant. 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 That was the, the uh, human being. Yeah, the human being. And look right? at all the people. Ginsburg, McClure, Gary Snyder, Ferlinghetti, Leary, Richard Alpert. I'm trying to think who it is. Was this Wes, Wes, Wes Wilson? Is that Wes Wilson or is that Stanley Mouse or is it both? I think that's or, Wes. Well, it'll say right there. Okay, I'll figure it out later. But And I love the fact, like, they used to have Bill Graham tickets. You'd go, you can get your tickets over at Nasidica. It would all be, always be at the bottom, right? Go to oh, Nasidica, yeah. grab your ticket. Oh, Edie Sedgwick. Billy Name took that. He did all, he turned, you know, Andy's thing into silver. And that show I, I talked to you about, my only bad acid trip ever. Yeah. That is right here. <laughs> April 10th, 1969. <laughs> Even the writing feels, ah, where am I going? Uh, <laughs> How about that? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, well, you know, we know that one. Signed. No, I mean, it was signed, but that, that was just on the poster. Yeah. Groovy. Lou Reed. That's on the cover of your book. Yeah, and Kristen, oh. Kristen tended that. Tell us the title of your book just while I have it on film here. Total Excess. Okay. Which is not available. Yep. But we're going to, hopefully you're going to maybe somehow make it come back. All right. Lou Reed. This is Kristen. We almost got busted. We, we're doing 
at the Embarcadero Center and I had my Japanese light man hitting her with lights and she had on a, a mink coat and was naked underneath and opened it up and somebody called and the cops came. They were going to bust us, but I knew one of the cops because he used to be a police station. He said, I know this guy. He said, if you tear this down in 10 minutes, you're gone. You guys can walk away. And so we did. And he goes, one of these pictures is going to be ready. I'd love to see him. <laughs> So wait, you did take that, did yeah. you? Yeah, oh, yeah. okay, well, I'm oh, yeah. trying to like, zoom in on it. Okay, I don't know your signature, yeah. Okay. Billy took this too, this is Nico. Of course. Wait, Billy now. Billy name. Okay. And I was in love with her, and I used to always, about every other week, I'd take the train from DC to New York, and I'd go to Cafe Wa, and I'd wait uh -huh. to meet her. And finally, after about three months, she came in one day and I was like in the corner writing poetry. And I just stared and I couldn't get up the courage to go talk to her. And I'm thinking, fuck, she finally walked out. And I'm trying to think, 1999, 2000, who was it? My mind's a blank. You know him. He actually lived in the village at the time. He's a singer. Uh, and he's very popular. And I'm telling him the story. And he goes, what? You didn't talk to her? He said, I was 17 years old. I lived in the village at the time. He said, I went up to her one day, Cafe Wa, bummed a cigarette. She brought me home. I lived with her for three months. Wow. He said, he said you fucked up. Wow. <laughs> Who would that be that lived there? Um, I know you got me wondering. Um, God, he's still. This is this is embarrassing. Oh, there goes. You're saved by the bell. Saved by the bell. <laughs>